You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From Los Angeles, California, and Maria Menounos, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Spotlight On is a long-form interview series featuring actors and TV personalities. And now, from the world's number one TV after-show platform, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Look at who it is. Got a little, little clip of okay. Driving Miss Daisy. Can they hear it, Phil? They can hear it? Okay, cool. They're watching it right now. Them? You yeah. did. That was you, right? That was all you. Yeah. Don't get me started. I'm not a fool. Oh. So I just gave her a ring. She says, let me send you a list. Okay, okay. But they were so great, these girls. They were really great. This video is awesome. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Ashley Daniels here for Spotlight On with somebody pretty damn incredible. I mean, I don't even know how to begin with you. You're like literally a quadruple threat. Jack friggin' Wagner is in the house right now. I mean, wow. Ashley, what I just the heck? met you, but I'm crazy about I'm you. I'm crazy thank about you, you, Jack. Thank you, thank you. Do you know what that does to me? I'm not even able to concentrate now. You just, Jack Wagner just said he's crazy about me. Yes, he did. Every girl in the world hates me now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, but seriously, though, I, people think to themselves, you know, when they move to L.A. or when they want to tackle anything in life, they kind of focus on one goal, and they hope they can attain that one goal. Literally, actor, musician, scratch golfer, singer, TV host, father, dancer, like, you literally are like everything. How, like, you just had no fear, you just, is that what it is? You just, you just went for it all? I mean, you didn't do it all at once, but you, you've become successful at everything you've wanted to do. Well, it's very, very nice of you, thank you, but I think we all have, we all have a book we could write about how we've gotten where we've gotten, you know, mm -hmm. the more I, the more I meet people, the older I get, you know, the more... The guy who's on the boom mic, you know, how did you get up there? The guy that's on the camera, the actor, yeah. the, you know, and, you know, I kind of came to L.A. as a, you know, singer, dancer, actor, you know, and from drama school. And back then it was, you know, you, you were supposed to act, dance, and sing. That was the triple threat. And it just fell together for me when I got the part on General Hospital. So I got cast as Frisco Jones. And he was a singer in a band, mm -hmm. Blackie and the Riff Raff, which mm -hmm. is John Stamos' yep. band. And Rick Springfield just left the show with Jesse's Girl. And Christopher Cross just had a number one record with Think of Laura from Luke and Laura Days. And, you know, I this was this national manhunt for this character. And after this was my fifth audition, Ashley, my second screen test. And they said, do you by chance sing or play the guitar? And I said... Yeah, and they said, well, could you bring your guitar in, sing something, and then we'll go into the audition. So I did a Kenny Loggins tune. Was, you know, I went into a the, wait a little while. Wait a little while. Yeah, it's a, not a big hit of his, but a cool tune. And I went into the audition, and I got the part. And from that, you know, I had to record and sing a couple songs to be played, mm -hmm. you know, with this Black in the Riff Raff band that Frisco was the lead singer. And then, you know, from that, I, I signed with Quincy Jones, and he put together a team that wrote All I Need, and it became a number one record. It was literally released. I got a call from the head of the record label saying, hey, this song's dead. It, it, it didn't work. And then one station played it in Ventura County, 101, and then they, their sister station played it in Miami, and all the fans on General Hospital heard this and would request it all over the country because it was being played on General Hospital. Every time I walked in the room, the da 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 And all of a sudden, <laughs> six weeks later, I'm number one, you know, on the adult contemporary chart, and number two behind Madonna, Like a Virgin, because the fans, you know, pushed this song to uh, top of the charts. Jeez, Otherwise, uh, yeah, so I have them to thank for that. That's pretty insane. What does it feel like knowing that, like, so many people were conceived from that song, when you think about it, <laughs> so, like so many people owe their lives to you. You really, yeah, you are well, life changing. You have to admit. I is, mean, it's, it's so like the best makeout yeah. song, like today. I can't. 
those moments, you know, those those drive up where you, you go and you drive. I don't know. They, they did in like the 60s, but yeah. I feel like there was like those makeout areas. Yeah. I feel like that song still is the best makeout song ever. Yeah, that song is. It's and pretty it was, cool. It was top of the charts right in the fall and Christmas time of 84 into 85. So, when, you know, when a ballad's a big hit around a holiday like Christmas, it, it just has a big impact. And I had yeah. so many people come up to me and say, yo, dude. Man, all I need, man. I mean, just, just, just let me take a picture. Say hi to my wife. I know I'm gonna get laid tonight. Seriously, I'll, I'll sing all I need in the camera. Well, yeah, I, because I, seriously, I hooked up with her during that song. So many yeah, men funny. owe you for so many wonderful <laughs> sexual encounters in their life. You are, you are a god. It's pretty awesome. But now we are seeing, so On the Porch is your new album. Yeah. You can go to jackwagnermusic.com to hear a couple of the songs, but it's also on iTunes where you can hear the whole, uh, all 12 songs. Kinder and they're original yeah. songs written yeah. by you. Yeah. I mean, you just, what, you had an epiphany one day where you picked up your guitar and you said, screw it, I'm writing again after, what, 10 years? I'm yeah. just going to start. Literally. I, I have, you know, I write a song or two every year and demo it and I'll do a concert date here or there and... You know, I, I literally, you know, I was a bit broken. Um, you know, sometimes we have to be in a place of either pain or some sort of bottom, I believe. Songwriters, writers, artists, painters, you know, at any mm -hmm. type of art form, I believe. Um, I, I think your best stuff comes out of your, you know, you know your deepest pain yeah. or, your, or your lowest bottom. So I was just yeah. at a kind of an emotional bottom. Yeah. And I kind of looked at my guitar one day and just these songs just started pouring out of me. And I um, was able to hook up the background singer in my band, Bree Howard, her husband. She's asked me for years to work with Dave Darling is his name. So I gave him a call. He said, come over. I played him something. He said, get in there right now and record it. And that's how we did every song. You know, Ashley, I've never really played guitar on any of my albums. And he said, this whole record's going to be, you know, played off of and molded around your guitar playing and your vocal. So it's that's, that's why, yeah. For someone who, truthfully, I don't listen, I'm not going to choose country music as my main, I like a lot of like rap music yeah, and sure. dirty music, I'm not going to lie. But I nasty love, girl. nasty, nasty, the dirtier the better. But I freaking love your music. Thank I you. really do. And I mean, obviously I loved your old music, but I'm saying this is different than your older music. Because I felt yeah. like with the older music, you kind of, you couldn't be 100% authentic to yourself. You kind of right. had to remain Really commercial and formula, yes, because right. the majority of my music I wrote for television. Right. You know, the storyline my character was in. You right. know, Not through Melrose Place in the 90s, but certainly in the soap operas, I was always doing music to coordinate the storyline. And this right. is, I wouldn't really call it, the Driving Miss Daisy has a real country feel. It's more Americana. You know, it it's is. more like, and that's why I called it On the Porch. I want, you know, the feeling of like, listen, this is just a bunch of musicians sitting on the porch knocking out some songs. Exactly. And that's hopefully how it feels. It does. It does feel that way. And it's it's light. There was one of your songs that I felt like was very um it had like a almost a gospel feel to it. I don't know why oh, the like right key. it was the We've right key. Got the exactly. right key. I was Turn ready in. to just like start putting my hands in the air, swaying. It was just very <laughs> like gospel. Good, like good. It, it was uplifting. Good. It was awesome. What does that song mean to you? Because I mean, I'm, I'm sure everybody can interpret it differently. I mean, I'm interpreting it like you and I are going to get married and this is the right key. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking of all your songs as if you're singing to them. But right. really, what does it really mean? You know, that, that song I actually performed on General Hospital in 1989. That's how old that song is. You're kidding. No. I've never... Yeah, and and the lyrics holds up today. It's it's real simple. We've got yeah. the right key turned in the wrong direction, the right dream waking up too fast. Mm -hmm. It's a long road full of good intentions. But girl, if we take it, I know we can make it last. And I think so many relationships, you know, you, you know, it's all there, but mm -hmm. we just can't quite why are we not we're just not hitting right. on all cylinders together. Right. So that's right. what that song's about. And this song was finished, done and ready to go and I kept listening to it and I'm going it misses. It's just not, you know, it just sort of is just kind of a song right now. Right. So what I did is I took the background vocals and okay. the breakdown part and I put it all a cappella at the beginning of the song. So it stands out because yes. it feels like, and that's all it is. We've it got the right key turned in the wrong and all the gospel sounds come in. 
And you know, it's it's really took Killing that song me, and I feel it elevated it to something really special because right. it locks you in early. Thanks for saying that because right. it was ready to go to to mastering and I said this song just is is better than this. The song's missing something, so I moved the vocals. But I love that you you take such pride in your work and you're not going to release it until you feel like it's a hundred percent where you want it to be. Some people just they're so excited about releasing an album, they're just like. F it, I'm just gonna, it's done, let's just go. Yeah. But you, you held on to that until you knew that it was where it was supposed to be. Well, the reason is when you pay for something yeah. on your own, there's no record label involved, so I'm learning about how you go about self-promotion. Mm -hmm. We've talked about yes. this a little while ago. It's gonna ago. be on Instagram soon, girls. Yeah, I'm not even on Instagram, social media, and how you go about really, how do you, how do people buy CDs these days? They really don't buy CDs, you know, you download mm -hmm. things, but you know, self-promotion has never been my thing. You know, there have always been record labels to do that in a television show I was on. And, and here I'm just kind of walking into something very new that's all about right. independently paying for something. You know, the video, I, I storyboarded, directed it, and produced it myself as well as the record. And so, you know, it's kind of my project. So when you say something has to be right, when something's yours, when you do a project, mm -hmm. you're going to make sure without stepping yeah. on anyone's toes or being rude, like, you know, this isn't feeling right. right. We got we to gotta dig deeper here to find out what's missing. And that's, right. that's what I was able to do with this because I had, you know, I paid for the whole deal and had control right. over it. You of know? course. Well, yeah, it's going to be extra important to yeah, you, especially right. if someone else isn't foot in the deal. Uh, so would you, what would you say was the first, do you remember what the first song that you wrote was on this album? Uh, probably the right key back in 89, but the first well, one I, mean, I wrote. I meant like the last like oh, nine yeah. months ago, whenever, when you I first see. started writing. Yeah. Um, I think the first song was, um, I have to take a minute with that. I don't yeah. want to give you a wrong answer, yeah, but right. I, I think you it might have been it. Broken. Broken, okay. That's at the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it might have been that. I think I just yeah. sang that. I went, broken, I'm so broken. Like, give and, me and an image of where you were. Like, you you know, you just, you go, you just sitting down like in your Yeah, I literally room, sit or... on the edge of my bed and wrote this whole record. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> And I found out if I had an idea, I didn't want to lose it, so I just put on the iPad on record, and that's kind of how you keep an idea. Right. And, you know, some of these songs were already written prior to this that I just reproduced, about three or four yes. of them that I co-wrote. But all the ones that I wrote myself literally kind of came at the edge of the bed with an idea about what I was feeling. Sometimes the, the, the music would come first and mm -hmm. then the lyric, and other times okay. the lyric would come first. and than the music, and I think okay. that's a common question. Yeah. People ask songwriters, like, yeah. how do you write or how yeah. do you go out writing? And, yeah. and there really is no set formula, I think most people will say. Yeah. You know, I could have, I had a, a song that I didn't write. Um, she, she's got the looks and she's read the books, but she puts mustard on the outside of my bread. Um, you know, I know you're educated. You told me about yourself, but isn't that great? She's got the looks. Awesome. She's read the books, but she puts mustard on the outside of my bread. <laughs> I know there's awesome. a song there. That's awesome. <laughs> Third and five, but I, I think there could be, right? I mean, really. She's got the looks. <laughs> she read the books, but she puts mustard on the outside of my bread. <clears throat> on the outside of my bread. There's something there. <gasps> Oh my God! I'll put your mustard wherever you want, Jack Wagner. You like Jack rap? Wagner. I mean, we could got the look. Oh my and God! This is incredible. <laughs> like, do you understand? I can't even breathe uh, right now. Uh, I could just. Oh my gosh! You're I can't too kind. even take it. I can't even take. You know, you don't understand. You're amazing. You're a legend. Well, you're so young. That's another thing I can't really monitor because okay. I think my demographic is forty women. I think 40 you're and completely older. wrong, and I think you need to re re look at that because there are so many girls that are not, I mean, yes, obviously you're gonna have people that love you still, they're like diehard fans from the very beginning, but right, right. you, first of all, don't age, so that's not, <laughs> that's pretty normal. I'm sure every man, like, secretly hates you. You're just like, you do everything, you never age, uh, like, being way too it's not normal. Now. No, it's not, but like, honestly, I've sat with a lot of people where I've told them the truth and it's not always as pretty, but like, that's the truth and it's not normal. Well, it's not you. cool. I work my ass off. Do you I, work out I'm a lot? I'm in the gym. I eat. Oh, you egg do. Whites, okay. I okay. So it doesn't come. I would hate you if you said healthy. you didn't. I mean, okay. it's, you know, it's a, it's. I they still. I was shirtless in something I did not too long ago. And when you're on a soap, you never know. You get like three days in advance. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Nick walks in yeah. shirtless, and I'm like going, really? 
I can't. There's no cheesecake. No dinner and pasta for the next three days. That. Yeah, but no. It's listen. I've been blessed to you know been <laughs> on awesome. so many shows for so many years, and but I work hard at it. You know, I think I know. body, mind, and spirit. I'm a big believer in in, yeah. in healthy body, mind, and spirit. Whatever that right. means for each individual, right. you know, is what it means. And right. for me, I I try to you know work out and keep my body in shape and right. eat right. Yeah. Yeah, I do. What would you say is like a moment that you look back on that was just maybe really a crazy moment, a crazy moment, maybe with a fan, maybe on set, something that was just, you were really embarrassed or you were really, you know, you, you just did something, you said something you shouldn't have said or just something like a crazy moment that you can think of. Like oh my a, God, Ashley. Have you had I, any of those? Or, Cause you're so perfect. Like, do you have any I like mean, moments where like you regret something? Oh, you mean something? where I screw up? Or you, you or somebody else or, yeah. Yeah, you know, I think y you can probably ask most people that have been around as long as I have, especially have d having done as many concert dates yeah. and the frenzy that's around that in the 80s, you know, et cetera. Right. You know, it's a real, it takes a, a real consciousness to mm -hmm. know that the person who is shaking or crying mm -hmm. or overwhelmed, mm -hmm. you know, this is so important to them. Right. And to treat each moment like that with respect and consciousness, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, and that's what I try to do. So yeah. I haven't put my foot in my mouth too many yeah, times. Yeah, right, right. The worst part is when you just got to go and, and, and people haven't gotten their autograph or mm -hmm. something. And it, and it hasn't been that way for me, you know, for years. But, it, it you know, when people do come up now, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a blessing. It's a gift to make someone's day. Right. And I think that you'll find a lot of people, who actors or singers who've been around a while, really know that now. Right. You know, we all have our ego and our rebellious stage when we're young. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a real gift to make someone's day and to right. share a moment. And, you know, it doesn't take much. Right. So right. hopefully I haven't insulted or put my foot in my mouth too many times. I don't sure think you I ever have. have. But I wanted to see if you had a flaw, but you don't. All right. So anyway, uh, but okay. So you, if you had to say, like, actually, maybe, I have my uh, flaw list in my back pocket. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. I'll get mine out. It will. It will. It will, <laughs> it will definitely uh, go four or five pages long. But no, when you were like doing first, like your. You were Frisco Jones in General Hospital. You were obviously Dr. Peter Burns in Melrose Place. You were, um, uh, the name escapes me, Nick Mar Marone? Nick Marone. Nick Marone in Bold and Beautiful. So who was the role that you felt like you were, you really didn't have to act? It was kind of more, it was easier to get into the role. Because I know with like, for Frisco Probably Jones. Probably when I played Jekyll and Hyde on Broadway. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah. We all have Jekyll and Hyde in us, let's be totally, honest, Totally, totally. I mean, let's face I it. I know, I know. But I feel like, at least for me, I watched, I mean, I, I got into Melrose Place after it ended, and I watched it religiously from Were the first season. Were you even born when Melrose Place was I on? I was, I was. Like I'm 25, 20, I'm 25. 25. I was born, so yeah. just on the cusp of that. Though. Yeah, but right. I got into it like two years ago, and I watched, I literally got addicted. It was like Breaking Bad for me. It was insane. Oh, From the first yeah. season to the last season to it that last. It was such an epic show. It, it really so had such a insane. cult following. Yeah, it was great. But I, I have to ask, because you are obviously a very accomplished actor, but I don't feel like a lot of people could do what you did because they changed Dr. Peter Burns up so many times. Like you were crazy, then you were normal, then you were in love, then you were like mental, and then you were, it was just like you, you had so many layers. Like real life. It was like, real, like real life. life. Yeah. But really though, like did you ever go into work and you were like, Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? Today I'm doing this. Like, yeah. did you ever think like how? Because it, it always surprised me, and I'm usually good at predicting things with yeah. shows. Right, but right. He was insane. He yeah. literally changed all the time. Yeah, he was a roller coaster. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> roller coaster. You know, that was the fun of that show, and that's the challenge of an actor. Yeah. You know, because um, even Breaking Ticky, Breaking Bad, for yeah. example. You know, the, the the dynamic of all of those characters. You know, but but. Melrose Place was a nighttime soap, right. for sure, that had the formula of most soap operas. But, mm -hmm. you know, it was a, at night on Fox, and it just hit at the right time. And people were hungry for that, right. you know, because there was Dynasty and Dallas right. and all of those things and General Hospital in the 80s. And I think the combination of having Heather Locklear on there, mm -hmm. who became, you know, of course. you know the, the superstar on the show. Right. Um, and then they brought me on. You know, right yeah. after she kind of came on, and I was pretty much well known from the soaps. Yes. And, you know, I think that the writers really locked into this we can be crazy, right. we can be poignant, you know, but everybody has, 
you know, this sort of dark motivated underbelly, yes. right? Yes. Anybody can be evil, but anybody can also get their nobility back by right. doing something or saying I'm sorry and the slate yes. is wiped clean, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. But yeah. it was but it was believable. And I hate to say this about soap operas, but regular daytime soaps, sometimes they're just so, I mean, that, that stare that you guys have to do, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I mean, you just, and, uh, give me it's one of those stares. Tag. Give me one of those. <laughs> tag of the show, and they call it fade out. Did I, I got the tag today? I was the tag. I was the tag here and you're going, I think I have to blink. I'm blinking, I'm, my eyes are starting to water. I think I have to blink, and cut. <sighs> we make it? Really, like this, like not believable. Yeah. It just, but, but, and not to say that it was believable. All the crazy things that happened in Melrose Place, but it was. Yeah. It sucked yeah. you in. My favorite storyline in all of that was when I was working with Marsha Cross and with the insane asylum. Oh, and, my God. you know, she's a real thespian, you know, and I'm, I'm a thespian, and we would work so hard on this material on how to make it work, how far we wanted to go physically, you know, and. It was just, it was a great process with her because we were, you know, kind of from the same world and spoke right. the same language and not every actor does, you right. know. So, you know, I know she's gone on to, to do great things with her um, hysteria, well, yeah. uh, 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 Desperate, uh, Desperate Housewives, Housewives yeah. and other things. But, yeah. you know, that, that particular storyline, you, you know, <laughs> was uh, Wisteria Lane was, yeah. was for me the, the most challenging and, and rewarding because it was really, you know, two actors that, really worked through it, had to process and, and really wanted to take chances and go for it. Right. You know? So it was, it was, you uh, definitely do that. Yeah. Well, thank you. Definitely you. did that. Do that. Continue to do it. It's pretty incredible. I have to ask you about your song. Um, the one about your daughter. Mm. I, I know I'm well, getting, I'm going to get sappy for one second. I'm sorry, yeah. but it I, I just, I find it so beautiful that you, first of all, the, uh, I know you've probably told the story a zillion times and you know, I don't want to make you explain the whole story again, but we all know, obviously, that you were reunited with your beautiful daughter, um, which was, I can't even imagine Actually what united, you went through. Actually united, not even reunited. Well, I never knew her. Why, yeah. Well, united, exactly, right. exactly. <clears throat> but you knew the second you saw her. You just knew yeah. that, it was, that, that this was mm -hmm. your daughter. And, and she, I watched an interview with, with you and her on Anderson Cooper, I think it was. And she is, you know, she was obviously because she was raised in New York. She's a New Yorker. She's, she's, she's a, a tough, she's awesome. What a personality That's on her. It's amazing you saw that. Thank you for bringing that up. She handled herself so well. She did. And she was so well spoken. And I think her real point was that, you know, if anyone chooses to find their real parents, just know you have to be ready for it. You know, yes. it's not always a happy ending. And right. You know, just be prepared to to maybe really have some joy and, and yes. a good thing happen or possibly not. And yes. that's what her message was. I, I was just so impressed with her through that I was, Cooper interview. I was too. I <laughs> loved her accent, first of all, the New York. I mean, you must love oh, yeah. her. She's her just Queen's tough as nails. accent. Yeah, she's Carrie. She's and she's absolutely she is just she's such a delight to watch and I loved how it looked like you two literally have been you've known each other your whole life. So you just, I mean, just, she made a joke. Oh, I don't know what it was, something about like, oh, I didn't know who Jack Wagner was. They said, did you know Jack? You were sitting there like, and she's like, well, he's a big boy. He can handle it. Yeah, and yeah. I just loved it. I was like, she is awesome. She, you yeah. just must have a blast just every time you have a conversation with her. And the more and more you get to know her, it must just get better no, and better. No, it's not a blast. <laughs> I she love her to death, but she is a girl, and yeah, one, I've had two boys, and I'm like, I know, one I know. day she, she could be, I think I want to go to the, the Alps, and I want to climb the mountain, and then I want to go to the Amazon, and I want to go to Africa, but I think I want to be a dancer, and I'm in veterinarian school. I'm like, you are getting okay, the whole thing. Okay, all right, love you. Just <laughs> let me know what tomorrow is, what we're doing tomorrow. I mean, that's, the indecisiveness. it's a girl. It's a girl, so yeah. So, yeah. uh, you know, I'm being educated to that, and I, I realize, you know, being with her now that she's an adult, yeah. you know, I, I, I try to just be loving and listen and, you know, I can give my opinion, but it, it's not going to land unless it's kind of asked for maybe. So she's terrific. I, I learn more from her than, uh, you know, I, I ever expected. She is incredible. And that song you dedicated to her on your new mm -hmm. album and writing that, you know, did it take you to a place where obviously, because you get very emotional when you do talk about her, and and did it did it really bring about a lot of emotions when you were putting the words to paper? Was it just? It was. Um, it was something I've never experienced in any form of creative, artistic, acting, dancing, singing, songwriting ever. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, thanks for bringing it up. I've never no, I, I, had an experience where I've written a song that was so, touched me so deeply. The lyrics were, it's called Song for Carrie, yes. and there's no mention about Carrie. It's just Song for Carrie, right. you know, and um, it, it, when I did lay the vocal for it, I it was very emotional. You know, yeah. I had to stop several times, mm -hmm. but it was just all so magical the way it was mm -hmm. produced. You know, I just did a guitar and then... Dave Darling produced some bells on it and some yes. really nice strings. And, you know, it's just that that song that was laying there inside me. Because when we did spend about four or five days together, I kept noodling with something. I had my guitar oh. and I kept noodling with something. And I'd, I'd sing, hey, girl, don't you look away, girl. And then I'd, I didn't know where it would go. And, you know, she loves the guitar and music. And so it, it kind of finally came together when I started doing this CD. That's amazing. I can't believe you had to go on stage right after you found out that you had a daughter. Oh. That's like insane. Brutal. I don't know how you did it. I, I, I have to give you so much credit for that. <laughs> this is you talking about You're a like, soap I have to opera. go on stage. Your life is a soap opera. I mean, this is... In so this many is, ways. This is... Do you want to hear this story real yeah, quick? Yeah, I would love to. She gets a private detective. She wants to find her mother and I. Her mother, she finds out, is living in New York. Uh, her mother and I were good friends, did about two or three plays together. We, we get together and, you know, you know, have sex and, you no know, way. we were friends <laughs> and yeah. And I mean, it's just what happened. And then I got a call, you know, I'm sure it's so difficult for her mother to go through all this too, but mm -hmm. made the decision to, you know, put her up for adoption and called right. and told me I've had a baby, right. you're the father. And that's how all this came down. And I was like, dumbfounded. I, 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 I had no power over what was happening, but I'm sure it was just as difficult for her mother, you know, because she's a great, great woman. And, you know, here I am ready to go on, of all people, for Rick Springfield, who I'd never met before, 30 some years after we were both in General Hospital. Right. I, got I can't asked, believe you never met him too. No. That's crazy. I called my agent and said, listen, Rick does this, you know, um, uh, cruise every year for his fans. Would you be the guest artist this year? And I said, well, I don't know, I guess so. You'd have to do a concert and do an autograph signing and kind of be on the boat. And then they called a few days later and said, listen, Rick's doing a concert date in Fort Lauderdale right by Miami in the amphitheater. You want to warm up for him? You want to do a co-concert with Rick? So I'm like, yeah, sounds cool. Never met him. Ready to go. So I go down there and um, five minutes before I'm ready to go on, the head of security comes to me. Uh, yeah, hey, listen, this person's the backstage. You need to see her. And here is a photo of Carrie's mother and I in like a cast photo from 1988. And I'm like, she's here? Oh, my God. Okay, I'm coming. And I go to the backstage, and in rushes this uh, hysterically crying, adorable young girl who just oh wraps her arms around me like this and is like crying. And I go where's you know colleen and she pulls away and she goes you don't know who i am do you and i said no i don't she goes i'm your daughter oh my god <sighs> jesus this is like you i mean I know, really like, unbelievable and we just held each other and i was like i just and i just took her immediately to my dressing room and here's the <laughs> band waiting rick's band who i've never played with anyone but my band but i rehearsed with them for a few times and they're seeing me walking with this cr crying 22 year old girl thinking what's going right, on right. with jack Some we're crazy ready to go fan. on like, right. and i sat backstage with her and just was like i knew immediately this you was did, huh? this was for sure so and i just was like i i'm just so happy you're here i <laughs> I don't know what to do. Right? I gotta like, go on. Yeah, There's about four thousand right people out there right now. I, I gotta do this. So we kind of talked for four or five minutes, and I said, "You mind sitting on the side of the stage over here?" I, I so. I offer you and a I, sandwich. First three songs, I was choking up. I was like, just I can't kind even of imagine. very blown away, and and then I was able to get her on the cruise to stay with me, and we spent five days on this cruise, and I you know, was able to bring her on stage when I did my concert on the cruise and, um, you know, really have this kind of God-given five days to connect with her. And, Unbelievable. you know, we have sense like, you know, she lives in Florida. I live here. We're not like this, this, yes. but we stay in touch. We see each other at least once a year, if yes. not more. Right. And, you know, that's the story. 
And this is the song that came out of that. What a, what a story. I mean, talk about a soap opera. You really have a life of like a soap opera. I mean, just... so many. Everybody knows about, obviously, your, how you met your first wife, you know, your well, Christina. Christina. Yeah, I mean, on General, General Hospital. Hospital. Frisco I mean, and Felicia. Crazy. You, know? you really owe, like, in a lot of ways, your music, your your son, so much to General Hospital, too, when you think about how much was created from General Hospital. Yeah, oh my god. You probably never knew yeah. doing it. You just thought, oh, it's a gig. I, I mean, it's a great gig that you got, but you yeah. never thought... That's why I went back for the 50th last yeah. year, you know, yeah. to really just say thank you to the show and honor the fans and, and just what that, that particular show has given me in my life, you right. know. Big, big just, chunk of it. And you weren't even on that long, but yet your character is just remains it's so ingrained in people. They just, they, Frisco Jones, just, it doesn't matter yeah. even if you didn't watch it then, you know who Frisco Jones is. Yeah. It's you just You know, crazy. actually, I used to battle that, you know, because they'd tag a name to you and yeah. it's like, but now I embrace it. I'm so grateful for it. And, yeah. I, and that's why I got out of the music business. I was always battling. Right. You're an actor. You know, I had this one hit wonder and then I had a couple other songs that were top 40, but... I was always batter, battling that stereotype and, and stigma of you're an actor, you can't be a singer, you know? Right. And I let it go. I just said, you know, I, I, I can't fight it anymore. I, I love music. I'd like to be a part of the music world, but, you know, I'm going to move on. And I did Melrose Place and then The Bold and the Beautiful. And that's why this CD is so... I just never dreamed that something would happen inside me that would motivate me to, to write music again or release a CD. And, you know, it's happened. Well, I love that you said the in one part, uh, you said on, I think it was Access Hollywood the other day, or maybe last week, you said that um, sometimes people chase being happy. They just, they, they, they want to be happy and they go through life looking to be happy and really life is about ups and downs. It's about, you know, breaking down, getting back up, however you said it. You basically were expressing that this album is, it, it really embodies your entire, you know, your entire career, your entire life, like emotionally. Right. <clears throat> and it's, it's, it's like life experience. The message is in these songs. I hope people, you know, the lyrics aren't overly complicated, right. you know, but there's a message in every song, except Driving Miss Daisy. It's kind of like, I mean, there's a deep underground message that one day I'll write in a book, but this is kind of a, seriously, this is why I picked this song, literally for people <laughs> like you, Ashley, yeah. because you'll look at this and go, that's Jack Wagner. Yeah. He's doing like, Americana Roots with a bunch of hot right, dancers right. doing this cool, you know, right. frickin' rockabilly tune. And right. I'm like, this is the song that I think will best maybe shake up some, some energy. Some, Absolutely. You know, and turn some heads maybe for a younger audience yes. that might groove on this. So um, that's why I picked it. Yes, a lot of younger girls. Absolutely. And this is one of those things where, and younger guys, I mean, you know, I'm sure, sure. a lot of men are in love with you, I'm sure. I well, mean, no, it's not just girls. they'll certainly enjoy the video. <laughs> they will definitely enjoy the video. And you, your voice, too. I mean, did you really, were you always able to just sing or did you just get it from kind of a lot of the theater that you did? Did you just kind of... Ex I could always sing. So My dad was a singer, sang in the car at home, you know, he was an he, automobile dealer, but he I had know, this big, was great voice. You know, he was this really big personality. And, you know, I kind of got a lot of that bravado from him, you know. Okay. Uh, but he had an amazing voice. And I just kind of, like, practiced it a few times. And then I just started singing to Neil Young and to Elton John stuff and sang in choir in school and then kind of started to learn how to play the guitar because a couple of buddies did in high school. And that's, that's how I sang. That's insane. And then I did Oliver. Your first part. Oh, yeah. Oh, One yeah. Boy, we both did. Oh, boy, boy, for sale. Please, sir, I want some more. I more? 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 You know that. You were Oliver. She was Oliver. Oh, yeah. I was the only one without boobs, so they were like, you, you're <laughs> Oliver. I went to an all-girls Catholic school. I know you went to Catholic school, so you, you know. You went you to know. an all-girls Catholic school. Oh, you yeah. That's why I'm mental now. I'm, like, rebelling. I'm, like, I'm crazy. I'm a crazy nutbag now. <laughs> That's what happens when you go to a... All girls school, you know, yeah. then you meet Chat Wagner and you're like, boys, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I know in Catholicism, you're taught everything that's good and fun is bad. Exactly. And you're going to go to, to hell for that. I mean, I, I have a higher power and a, I'm very spiritual, but I, know I have kind of stepped away from Catholicism for me a little bit. I, I have still, too. still go to church occasionally. Exactly. As long as you're a good person, I think, cares yeah, what you right. You know. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, exactly. right? Exactly. Exactly. Now, okay, I have to ask you. So right now you're single. Correct? Kind of. Not the song. You're kind of single. Okay, I, just, I don't want to break anybody's hearts out here. Okay, so you're kind of single. You know, but... I'm not. I'm actually 
been in a relationship okay. for a little bit. Okay, because I was going to say, there's a lot of love in the music as well. Yeah. And you don't sound like a guy that's like, oh, I friggin' hate my ex. Like, you don't have, like, a lot of negative. It seems like no. you really, like, you seem like you're kind of in a bliss. It's like a happiness that's, so you definitely, it sounds that way at least. <clears throat> so if you're feeling all these emotions when you were writing it, there's clearly some, but some inspiration behind it. Somebody inspiring We heal you. through, no, not that. We heal through love. Right. I and mean, that's why we heal. Yeah. You know, and this yeah. is a, this is a record about overcoming, a CD about overcoming mm -hmm. things, about feeling things, and about a healing process. Because right. I just don't know anyone that doesn't feel grief, you know, haven't mm -hmm. gone through the five stages of grief. Right. You know, I encourage all of you to look them up because mm -hmm. you will lose someone in life. You will be broken because your heart's been broken. You will, you know, those things are going to happen to you. And this, you know, it does happen. So right. this is, you know, I just, I just think, you know, we're in a constant process of healing in our life and someone like you brought up being raised catholic mm -hmm. and whatever your childhood was like you right. know how do we get those needs met right. that weren't met right. you know our parents aren't perfect there's no manual no. on how to be a nurturing caring loving parent no so I, I just you know not to get too therapeutic or clinical i i just think that most of us are always in that process of trying to deal with our emotions mm -hmm. not be overly triggered mm -hmm. And, you know, how do you kind of recognize what needs to really be healed? Right. And that's what this CD is about, you know? Yes. So that's why I think a lot of people will relate to it. And a lot of people will go to it either for healing or, you know, it, it is uplifting as well. And if they're yeah. in good spirits, it's going to keep them yeah. in those good spirits. It kind of, it really can speak to everybody. There's a lot of messages behind your lyrics. And there's, there's I a love song that. I wrote. Thank you very much, by the oh, way. Oh, you're welcome very I much. I wrote this song. I Look on it, yes. another <laughs> lonely night. Right. I, I wrote looking at another lonely night yeah. in about an hour. I mean, it all came together and it was just I was an just, hour. That's yeah. Not, yeah. The oh song, the God. whole thing, lyric and music. And, it, and the next lyric is do I turn left, which is the hard road, mm -hmm. the road of change or turn to the familiar right. 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 Do I pick up the phone or do I go to old behavior, which is just going to give me the same results. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of this record is about. Do I really walk the road of happy destiny, which is facing my fears and really looking at some change? Mm -hmm. Or do I go to my old behavior, old pattern, therefore I get old results? See, now I have to ask you, mm -hmm. a lot of people that maybe are on a road to sobriety, on a road to anything that's healing, maybe mentally or, mm -hmm. or physically, there you know, a lot of girls especially, um, yeah. It could be anything. It could be from alcohol, it could be drugs, it could be eating disorders, whatever. I feel like this music also, because what you kind of just said is, is you know, if you go to your past and you do the old behavior, you get the same results or you can go. So it's kind of, it, it does have a healing way, a healing message as well. And then this in was, that I, way. I was thinking of girls when I wrote this, women. You yeah. know, it's a real healing process because I think women have been empowered. Mm -hmm. You know, someone like yourself or Maria who has the mm -hmm. show, et cetera. You know, yeah. women, you know, really have stepped up and yes. have their own identity in a different way than the old generations. Yes. But still, you know, women want to feel loved. You want to fall back into a place of love and comfort. That's right. what really the core is of the feminine. And then the masculine is search for freedom. You know, there's that, that's what the masculine looks like. And right. women have masculine and feminine sides and men have masculine and feminine sides. And you know, the message in this CD is really about, wow, how do you really look at that? What do you do with that? What do you do with that, you know? Because we all hurt, we all mm -hmm. feel lonely, but ultimately when we want to go to old behavior and, and continue to do the same stuff, we're going to get the same results. Right. And ultimately, i found for myself, if I don't have a spiritual contact and if I don't have the ability to be okay with who I am mm -hmm. and be alone at times and be okay with being alone because everybody's about this and mm -hmm. this or television, you know, it's a visual distraction which really takes us out of being with ourselves. And I've, I've just have worked really a lot in my life to just step back and be okay no matter what. Right. And it's funny you say that because, I mean, I'm going to get like a little, I'm going to say something about a horoscope right now, but you're a Libra and a lot of Libras don't like to be alone. No, no. So it's really interesting that you are okay with being by yourself. I mean, because a, a lot of people that are Libras, at least in my family, yeah. they, they have to have distractions all they're the time. They're social people. Yes. Yeah. They're to, the so, balance is off. We're yes. just a mess. You yes. know, that's why they're the scales. But listen, I'm not perfect. I work at it. Well, it, you it, are. But. A big, a big process in life is identifying. Like how right. do you just identify and have a consciousness of some of the shit that goes on yeah. in us yeah. that just is like, ugh, 
This yep. just isn't okay. How do I go about changing it? And the only way you can change anything I've found is, first of all, be aware of it. Just have a little simple awareness in that moment. Because right now we're in this moment together, right here. Mm -hmm. and that's all we've got. Mm -hmm. That's all, all any of us have is presence in this moment. Mm -hmm. And that is really the evolution of consciousness. Right. There's a book so, there somewhere. I'm I know. I'm stealing that from I Eckhart. Actually, it's so funny. When I Eckhart first Tolle. was, I really thought you wrote a book. You didn't write. Someone wrote a book. My, my life with Jack, something about Jack Wagner. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm getting obsessed. over yeah, Jack Yeah, getting Wagner. over Jack Wagner. Oh, yeah, that was yeah, That must be ago. really gratifying just to know someone put your name in a book about it's, It was, pretty yeah. Pretty crazy. Like, what is you need a about? book, though. You have too much going on. That you, oh, that's I nice. have to know now, what is going on with identification, discover, ID discovery, channel heartbreakers mm -hmm. so you're reuniting with two of your castmates from melrose place right um rob estes, estes and jamie Lynn. yes you know it's a first it's a season premiere it was one episode and it's basically you know you know the id channel where they do the murder mysteries yes they're putting in real actors right and we act out the thing as opposed to you know seeing clips of this and that and they do this on you know those murder mysteries the ids or oh, those kind of things right so it's a new series about heartbreakers where they're, and I got to play this Southern Baptist minister who is a complete narcissist, power hungry uh, adulterer, you know? He, and so it was awesome. Do you think there's My name is more? David Love. You can call me Brother Love. And I said, Brother Love, can I get an amen? Oh, this was beautiful stuff, so. Are you doing more? Is it going to be? No, it's just a one-off. Oh, one it episode. is? Oh. Yeah. But I, I did a lot. I'm going to do some promotion for the series itself. I like the ID yeah. channel. And it, it, yeah. was, it was a great character yeah. to play. Yeah, seeing in, in Lexi. I mean, just, oh, my God. Yeah, Jamie's great. Know, it's good to I see know. Rob again. It's so cool. So yeah. cool. What can we expect music-wise? You, do you kind of have the bug again now where you're like, oh, you know, you did the music. You, you released the album. Do you want to add more music videos um, to any of the songs that you've released? Do you want to... You know, actually, I'm going to wait and see. Do? I'm just kind of in the first beginning steps and yeah, stages. Yeah, I know. Of, I'm already jumping. No, that's all right. But, you know, I'm like releasing this. I'll <laughs> see how successful this is, you know. And mm -hmm. ideally, I'd like to start booking some small concert dates, you know, around the yeah. country in different markets to just, you know, go out and play again and uh, get a feel for if anybody's interested in hearing Jack Wagner in concert. You know, I played so many years I was on the road doing concerts, and it's like, you know, is anybody interested? It really boils down to that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm into it. I, j I just need to kind of like get mm -hmm. a feel for, yeah. uh, is there a market out there? There is. There is. Well, thank you. Yeah. If, I had to, if I had all of you out there, well, thank you very much. <laughs> so I want to know, okay, you, one more thing I wanted to ask you. So that obviously there's so many things I could ask you, but I have to ask you this. Will you do a quick little scene with me, a little soap scene, or just a little, you did it on the Katie Couric show like last year oh yeah uh -huh. just a quick little something just a little something okay whatever you can say i don't care i just want to watch I, this is like real life soap opera this, okay. i'm putting you away on the spot i'm sorry all right anything you want to say you know ashley you said that you were going to get your nails done you're going to get them done dark red because i like dark red but i'm noticing the pink you used it's fucking sexy so i want to thank you for surprising me with the pink don't go to your neck. I'm not going to choke you yet. Okay? <gasps> Keep your smile on. But I love it, baby. Nice choice. <gasps> Jack nice, Wagner, everybody. Nice choice. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, everybody, if you want to... <laughs> love the pink. <laughs> Where am I? Okay. Everybody, go to jackwagnermusic.com. You can listen and buy the album. And Check out will, the video on Jack, YouTube, Jack Wagner Driving Miss Daisy. See if you like it. And what's your Twitter handle? Uh, at Jack Wagner HPK. Okay. Harrison Peter Carey. Cool. And then we also have, you'll be doing an Instagram. You'll be creating an Instagram I'm creating at some an point. Instagram. She's helping me I right help after him. this. And I'm, he will tweet I need help. the name of the Instagram so you guys can go follow him on there as well. And, yeah, you can tweet me if you have any other uh, comments. Uh, we're going to be putting this up on YouTube in a few hours. So thank you so much I for thank watching. You. you were fantastic. Oh, and my for gosh. you to know so much about my background, it makes this interview so easy. I'm really oh grateful. Oh, my gosh. Thank, I, you. thank you so much. That means a lot. Oh my God. And I love, right, love the pink man. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. 
To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs>